Christmas is over, thank God. I've been getting tired of using multiple apps to control my smart home, so I took matters into my own hands. Hello, and welcome back. Or if you're new here, then just hello. If you follow my channel, not sure why you would really, you may have noticed I uh, hadn't posted for a few weeks. That's because I got lost down the proverbial rabbit hole that is known as Home Assistant. Don't worry, this isn't a video of me diving into Home Assistant because nobody needs another one of those. But what this is about is a device to display a smart home and dashboard or display anything for that matter. I've played with the likes of the uh, Amazon Echo Show 15 and 10, both of which turned out to be dead ends, as well as some Android tablets that didn't really satisfy my itch. That means they didn't really do what I wanted them to. So in this video, I will be explaining about the little effort I put into researching and creating my very own solution with off the shelf kit, obviously. My own imposed requirements were, it had a 15 inch touchscreen, it'd be able to load and display a web page, be able to use my photos for a screensaver, it needed to be portable, not cost the earth, not need a ton of hacks to get it working, all run from a power bank, and finally, for it not to look like a big old bag of donkey dicks. Before the comments start with the use your phone, smart homes don't need dashboards, you got a computer, use that and, and so on. This dashboard, although it's, it's gonna look awesome, is primarily for visitors to my home so they can very easily see and control every aspect. So what did I end up with? The first thing I looked into, which was gonna be the most expensive aspect, was the touch screen. A quick search on Amazon and 119.99 great British pounds later, we have this. 15.6 inch portable touch screen from don't worry, all links for everything down below. Thanks. It's a 1080 60 hertz display, perfectly fine for a web browser. It has type C inputs for power and touch and a full sized HDMI port. It's also low on power, so it can run from a power bank and has a built in stand. Touch screen. Done. Next, I needed something to drive the screen, i.e. a computer that was capable of running a web browser, was wireless and again able to be powered via a power bank. I landed on this, a Raspberry Pi 3B. Uh, this is the 2016 version. There are Pi 4s now, as well as Pi Zeros and God knows what else, but the three was right for me. A Raspberry Pi is basically a teeny tiny computer and this particular one with a 1.2 gigahertz processor, one gig RAM, wireless and Bluetooth, all in a cute little 65 by 30 by 15 millimeter form factor. Full specs can be found on the link down below. Thank you. Next up, I needed to be able to power the screen and the Pi for short periods when the device was mobile around my home and that's where this came in. A 3600 milliamp hour power bank, which I'm, I'm sure I was sent to review at some point. Anyway, it's from Fasui and uh, currently costs, at time of scripting, 39.99 great British pound. And once again, in fact, you know what? There'll be links for everything down below. Thanks. It measures 10 by six by three centimeters and weighs 450 grams. Finally, I needed a micro SD card to install in the Raspberry Pi to run the operating system. And being a videographer, I have spare cards laying around. But if you did want to buy one, they'll set you back about seven quid for 128 gig. Now I had all the components. So next it was time to set them up and test them. All of the cables I needed for testing came with the associated devices, so I started by using those, knowing full well I would replace them with shorter ones later on. I tested that the screen booted and worked using my laptop, and it did, so next it was onto the Raspberry Pi. To install an operating system onto the micro SD card, you'll need to connect it to another computer and then download the Raspberry Pi OS tool. Trust me, don't panic. Honestly, it is super, super simple. Choose your operating system. I went with Pi Lite. Set your wireless info and then choose the SD card as the destination. 
five minutes or so later, it was done and ready to be put into the Pi. Unless you buy a power cable with an inline button, the Pi doesn't have an on off switch. It's controlled with power. So as soon as you connect the power, it will try to boot up. I connected the HDMI cable and USB cable from the screen to the Pi and away it went. It booted up without issue straight into the operating system. I mean, I, I didn't even need to mess around with drivers for the touch aspect. One thing I then found out by accident, I my ad was when I disconnected the power cable from the screen it stayed powered on and it turns out the Pi is able to provide both power and data over a single USB cable bonus. So now the Pi was booting and my touch screen working, the next thing was to test my Home Assistant dashboard. The built-in Chromium browser on the Pi loaded nice and fast and it was simply a case of me logging into my Home Assistant and that was it. I was done. Well, almost done. Long story short, I ended up building a completely new dashboard within Home Assistant so it would display exactly how I wanted it to. And to be honest, this was probably the longest part of the entire project. And next, it was to connect it all to the power bank to see if it would boot up and run. And guess what? It did. So in very crude terms, I was done. In fact, at this stage, it did look like a big old bag of donkey dicks. So it was time to clean it up a little. I purchased the case for the Pi so that it had some protection and so I would have something to mount it in via. And I went with this. Uh, I think it was from Geekworm and it was around $11.99 on Amazon. Running an IT business, cables are never a short supply. So I had plenty of short ones laying around. Next, using some 3M tape, I secured the power bank and Pi to the back of the screen and hey presto, a portable home touchscreen dashboard is born. So the project is done and finessed, well for now anyway. And if you're interested, it's uh, silent, not even registering on the decibel meter whatsoever. I'm sure there will be plenty of comments about other options and telling me I could have done this or I should have done that. But you know what, as a first attempt, I'm happy. Using the 3600 milliamp hour power bank is probably a bit overkill to be fair, as so far I've left this running on battery for at least four hours, which is more than enough for what I wanted. With the case, touchscreen and Pi, the total cost was 175.46 because I had all the other bits at home, which to me is still cheaper than buying an Echo Show or any 15 inch tablet that I could find. If you add in the cost for the micro SD card and a power bank, you're looking more around the 220 mark, which is a fair amount. And I'm sure there are other options available. But having said that, the benefit of this solution over all others is all of the parts and cables can be reused for many other things. For example, the Pi can pretty much do anything from running as a basic home PC a home assistant server through to being a full on retro games machine. So there you have it, we're dedicating a little time, reading some articles, shopping about and recycling, I was able to build my very own portable dashboard in under four hours. Granted, I didn't have any kids running around and I did have some Amazon funds from you guys. So yeah, thanks for that. I've put all the kit and software I used down below in the description should you want to try building your own. And if you have any questions about any of them or anything else for that matter, then please do let me know in the comments box down below and do you know, washed her down there. Hey, that's what she said. Please do consider liking the video, even if you didn't. Subscribing if you aren't already, hit the bell to get notified when I upload new videos because it helps me get sent more free stuff to play with and to make videos about, so yeah. Thanks, and uh, thanks for watching. Goodbye, internet. Put this chain on me, like they all hate on me. Don't bring that rage on me. Why they throwing shade?